Preparations begin for the next great total solar eclipse. Comet 12P Ponds Brooks brightens, and we take a tour of some of the best open star clusters that you can go out to see with a pair of binoculars. Let's take a look at everything that you can go out to see and image in the night sky for February of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Welcome to your guide to the heavens above. Whether you're brand new to this hobby or have years of experience, there'll be something in this video for you to go out to see and enjoy in the night sky. With no major meteor showers in the month of February, I thought we would turn our attention to the upcoming total solar eclipse that's gonna be cutting through major parts of North America on April 8th. With just two months to go, it's important to finalize your plans and buy any solar glasses or solar equipment that you may want to use to safely view this event. With the path of totality cutting through major parts of North America, if you haven't already, go ahead and find a place to stay right under or near the path of totality and do some research to see if you can find any local astronomy clubs or public libraries in those areas that are hosting eclipse viewing parties. Back in 2017, for the last great total solar eclipse to cut through North America, a friend and I drove down to Tennessee to be right under the path of totality. We found a daytime star party that was being hosted by a public library, and it was a wonderful time experiencing this event with others, with people sharing their solar telescopes and talking about other total solar eclipses that they had experienced over the years. Let me know if you have plans to go see this total solar eclipse in person, and always be sure to wear protective solar gear whenever you're viewing the sun. Unless you're under that specific path of totality where the moon completely blocks the sun for just a few minutes, you have to wear protective solar glasses regardless of how much of the moon is covering the sun. Be sure to subscribe to this channel because we'll have a lot more coming up in the March and April editions of the night sky about this incredible event that millions of people will be experiencing in just a few weeks. Speaking of the moon, whether you want to avoid it for deep sky astrophotography or observe it with binoculars or a telescope, let's take a look at the phases for the month of February. The month starts off with a last quarter moon on February 2nd. New moon on February 9th. First quarter moon on February 16th and a full moon on February 24th. We've also got the moon near several objects this month, leading to some enjoyable pairings in the evening and early morning sky. On the night of February 4th, look for the moon to move in front of the star Antares in what is called an occultation. This will only be visible in parts of Asia, and I'll include a link to a website called In the Sky, so you can check to see if you'll be able to view it from where you live around the world. February 7th and 8th sees the moon close to Venus, Mars, and Mercury in the early morning sky close to the horizon. And on February 15th, the moon will be near Jupiter and Uranus in the early evening sky right after sunset. After some incredible months of observing the planets, we're hitting a bit of a dry season beginning in February, but thankfully we still have Jupiter in the early evening sky. You're gonna wanna catch it right after sunset before it gets too low to the horizon in the west. For those of you who enjoy astrophotography, be sure to get your images of Jupiter before it gets lower to the horizon as each day passes by. And as always, I would love to see your images of the planets or anything else in the night sky by having you share them with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. Other than that, we really just have Uranus traveling near Jupiter with possibly some views of a very low Venus in the southeast right before sunrise with a close pass to Mars on February 22nd. Comets are the cold, icy remnants of our solar system, and as they approach the sun, brighten, and sometimes even form a tail for us to go out to enjoy with imaging, or even seeing visually sometimes through a pair of binoculars or a telescope. We start off the month of February with Comet C2021-S3 Panstars. This is an early morning comet traveling through the constellation Ophiuchus at around 10th magnitude. Up next is Comet 144P. 
It passed by Earth in December of 2023 and continues to dim each night as it travels through the constellation Taurus, somewhere between 8th and 9th magnitude for February. Rising in the east to good heights for viewing just before midnight is our next target, Comet 62P. This 9th magnitude comet is also getting more dim each night, but is also visible for both hemispheres as it travels through the constellation Virgo. The most impressive comet this month and probably for the first part of 2024 is one we've been talking about since last year, Comet 12P Pons Brooks. Between 7 and 8th magnitude in brightness this month, it continues to race towards Earth, making its closest approach this April. So far, everything we've talked about in the night sky this month has been within our own solar system. Let's move now into deep space. For about the past six months, I've been working through the Astronomical League's Binocular Messier program, and I thought we would focus on some open star clusters that are out right now that you can go out to view with just a pair of binoculars. Begin by going outside and looking towards the south. I was using a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars with about a 6.5 degree field of view of the sky that I was seeing. I looked for the brightest star in that portion of the night sky, Sirius. And just below this bright star, I found the open cluster M41, where I was able to make out at least six distinct stars in this cluster. Above Sirius, you'll star hop over to M50, a smaller and less resolved open cluster than M41. Moving down from M50, is a nice pair of open star clusters close together from our perspective, M47 and M46. Out of these two, M47 is the easier to spot, showing off almost a V formation of stars. Darker skies and a little bit of patience will eventually reveal M46 as a blurry sphere just nearby. Moving over from M46, we'll show you the faint open cluster M48. Moving on to the constellation Cancer, reveals a small diffuse open cluster called M67 that makes way for our main event this month, the impressive beehive cluster M44. Visible to the naked eye, this is one of the closest open clusters to Earth and reveals itself as a beautiful target through binoculars, a telescope, or long exposure astrophotography. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below that will cover more deep sky objects for you to enjoy this month. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can go out to see and image in our night sky for the month of February. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're hoping to go out to see and image and any questions you may have in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.